Welcome or welcome back Happy Fabricators. In this video, we're going to be going over the three different types of TIG welders. We're going to be showing you how they work, what the differences are, and the pros and cons with each of them. So the three different types of TIG welding that we're going to be looking at today are scratch start, lift arc, and high frequency. Now if you're new to this channel, I want to thank you for watching and ask that if you find any value in this content that you consider subscribing and hitting that like button. Now the first type of TIG welding is scratch start. Now this is becoming a little less common as technology progresses, but it is the longest standing type of TIG welding and was previously referred to as Heliarch. The most common name is scratch start. Now scratch start TIG, all you need is the torch setup with the valve included on the torch and we've got the gas run directly to here and then a power lead. Now this one I have here has a DINS connector on it so we're going to connect it to a welder that has a DINS connector. You can also get scratch start rigs that just have a flat lug on them that you can clamp your stick welding lead to. So we're going to go down to our stick welder down here, hook it up and show you what we got going. Okay, so we are down here at our stick welder, which is also my Prime Weld MIG 180. This is a MIG stick combination machine, and we just have two power lugs on the front. So when you're TIG welding, you want to remember that you always stick your torch side in the negative lead. So we're going to unplug our lead there and stick the torch in the negative lead. Now, if you have the type that just has the clamp lug, you would take your stick welding stinger here and you would plug that into the negative lead and then you would clamp your stinger to the lug itself. But in this case, we can plug it directly into the machine. Then we're gonna take the other lug and plug our ground clamp into the positive side. Now, like I said, this is a MIG stick combination machine, but you can make the scratch start process work on any stick welder there is. And that right there is the only thing that you need for a scratch start system. You need your torch to be plugged into the negative side of a power supply, which is more commonly a stick welder. And then you need your gas, which runs directly to the gas regulator, unlike most processes where it runs through the machine. This is just gonna run directly to the regulator. Okay, so now the machine is on, we're gonna be very cautious of where we touch this tip to, especially since our table is grounded. And what we're going to do, much like a stick welder, is we are going to scratch our tungsten electrode to the workpiece to initiate that arc. So sometimes it gets slightly stuck when you touch it, and then you lift off to the correct distance that you're going to use and start welding. So we've got some stainless here, and we're going to run a little bead to demonstrate this for you. Another method that some people use, instead of scratching tungsten directly to the piece, I've seen people pull the tungsten slightly off the workpiece and then take their filler metal and swipe it across it to connect the tungsten to the workpiece and initiate that arc. So we want to turn our gas on, make sure that's on with our valve here, and we'll light this up. And then when you're done, you just lift up and break that arc. And then make sure to turn your gas off. So as you can see, this left a nice clean little bead here. So that's the gist of a scratch start TIG welder. The pros and cons to it, I would say the pros are it is probably the most economical way to get started TIG welding. You can get a TIG torch lead like this and a bottle of argon and hook it up to any stick welder and you can find stick welders anywhere in the world. That's probably the most universal form of welding. The other pro to it is once you learn how to scratch that and get your form down, for your distance and moving and your travel speed and all that. There's actually a couple less things to keep track of because you don't have a pedal and you're not having to keep track of your foot. You can do some practicing, set that amperage, lock it into whatever the material you are you doing and then all you have to worry about is your filler material and your travel speed. The downside to it is you don't have a pedal like some of the other methods we're gonna go over here in a little bit. Now let's get set up for the second type of TIG welder which is lift art. So, Okay, so to demonstrate this process, we're going to be using the Prime Weld MTS 200. Now, this is a multi-process machine. That's what the MTS stands for, MIG TIG Stick. And that's where you're going to more commonly find the lift TIG type of welder, is in a lot of multi-process machines. Most of the time, it is DC only. This machine is not just a stick welder. It actually has a TIG welding function. So we'll be able to turn it on, turn it on to the TIG welding mode, 
and that will allow us to have the lift arc function. As you can see, it's the exact same torch. We're still going to have to turn the gas on manually, but let's do a weld and we'll show you the difference between that scratch start and a lift arc. Okay, so as you recall, on the scratch start, we had to kind of swipe at our weld just a little bit like this and scratch it and touch our tungsten to the workpiece to initiate that arc. What the lift arc is going to do is allow us to kind of refine that start a little bit. Touch your tungsten to the workpiece, release, and start that arc. So overall, what that allows you to do is just be a little more refined on your starts. Especially if you're working on thinner material. As you can see here, we've still got, once I remember to turn the gas on, we've still got a nice clean little weld that is very achievable. Because this is with our lift arc here, and this is with our scratch chart over here. And this is me being dumb for getting to turn the gas on in the middle. So that's a little bit on the functional differences between the scratch start and the lift arc. The benefits that you're going to get with a lift arc, there's a couple things. It's just a little easier to master. You, instead of kind of erratically scratching and trying to pass by without sticking too hard, you can contact that tungsten to your workpiece and lift off and as soon as you lift that arc is going to initiate. Some people use lift start welders because they can't use the next welder that we're going to talk about which is the high frequency because sometimes high frequency will mess with other local frequencies. That's becoming less and less with technology but sometimes when you're in an area when you cannot chance that lift start is what you have to use. Now to demonstrate our third type of TIG welder today, we're going to be using my Prime Weld TIG 225 ACDC and this is a high frequency start machine. Now what differences do a high frequency machine have versus a lift arc or scratch start? The first immediate difference is it has a pedal. So your torch is dead in the water and safe until you initiate the arc with the pedal. The other primary difference that a high frequency machine has is it allows you to adjust your amperage on the fly. So our pedal works as a potentiometer and I know that's a big word but basically what that means is it is a switch that allows you to deliver variable amounts of currents in different positions. So as you traverse this pedal down through its range of motion the switch inside is going to allow the current to be initiated in a sort of progressive way. It will start off slow and then progress to a higher amperage as you compress the pedal. Now you can adjust the max of that progression. So let's say that you wanted to have a max range of 80 amps. You can set your machine to 80 amps and full throttle this pedal and the most you'll get out of it is 80 amps. But in the event that you need to back off a little bit or potentially you need to give it a little more amperage to get through a thicker spot or whatever the case may be, you can set that amperage a little higher and with the high frequency and with the availability of the pedal, you can adjust that on the fly. The other difference to the high frequency machine is like I said, your torch is not live or powered until you compress that pedal. So it just kind of makes it a little safer work environment. The other thing that allows you to do is to not actually touch your workpiece. In some scenarios when you're doing more exotic metals like stainless or titanium, sometimes actually scratching or touching your tungsten to the workpiece, depending on how finite the work you're doing, could actually contaminate it. So as I said before, that high frequency allows you to initiate that arc without actually touching the tungsten to the workpiece itself. So let's give you a little demonstration. So as you can see, the high frequency allows it to jump the gap without even touching it. And also to be clear, don't try that at home. I'm a professional and that was for demonstration purposes only and proper safety precautions were taken. There was no ground hooked up and some other safety precautions, so don't try that at home. Okay, so like I was saying before, unlike our previous two welders, we're going to be able to go down, not have to touch our material, push the pedal and initiate that arc. We can weld along to our heart's content. We can adjust that temperature to go colder or hotter, whether we're traveling faster or slower. And the other benefit that gives us is as soon as we release that pedal, that is going to extinguish our arc. Now, 
especially with things like stainless or other exotic materials, that allows you to have a post flow, which allows you to keep your torch here while the gas continues to flow on that metal and allows it to cool down. Whereas with our two other types of machines, we had to break that arc off. Therefore, removing that blanket of gas from that weld and not allowing it to post flow and cool and shield. So as you can see there, we're able to get a nice, clean, precise weld at the end there because we're able to adjust it on the fly without having to mess with the machine to our desired temperature and speed and make all those things work. So the pros and cons to a high frequency machine. Now, as you can see, it, there are mostly pros when it comes to the capabilities of it. It allows you not to touch the tungsten to your workpiece, therefore you're not contaminating it, therefore you're not potentially getting it stuck as easy. There's still a learning curve. It allows you to adjust your amperage on the fly and have a much crisper, cleaner start. So you can start at a two to five amp startup and some machine, some more advanced machines, you can even get down to like a half an amp startup. I think this machine is somewhere between five and 10 amps on the startup. Don't quote me on that. Uh, the other big pro for me is, as you've seen, I forgot to turn the gas on. So what this also does is it, it allows you not to have to worry about remembering to turn your gas on. As soon as you initiate that pedal, that excites the solenoid, which turns the gas on automatically. So that's another huge pro is you don't have to worry about turning the gas, remembering to turn the gas on or for getting the gas on. So you are saving gas and material by not messing it up in that way. So what are the cons with the high frequency machine? The biggest con not to let it overwhelm you or scare you, but it has the most things to learn and do at the same time. So you are running your travel speed, you're running your filler rod and you're running a pedal all at the same time. So you have one more element to throw in the mix to learn and to master all at the same time, kind of like rubbing your head and patting your belly there. Uh, the other con is it is, does emit high frequencies. So in some cases I have seen it react with radios or things like that. Sometimes my wireless earbuds, it will react to those depending on the brand. Um, it's never consistent, but it is getting better as technology comes along. They are refining stuff like that so that it does not affect as much. Honestly, I have not had this machine affect anything like that. I have an older synchrowave at work that will mess with my earbuds and stuff like that. So I've recently reached 10,000 subscribers and I cannot thank you guys enough. It has been a fun journey learning how to make videos and trying to provide valuable content to you guys. I really enjoy doing this, sharing the wisdom that others have taught me with you guys and also the things that I've learned on my own along the way. So if you'd like to help out this channel, the biggest thing you can do is hit that subscribe button so you're notified of upcoming videos along with that little bell icon. The other thing you can do is hit that like button. It lets the algorithm know that you like this video and other people might like it too. The other thing that you can do is share this video with a friend that you might think would find value in it. And last thing that you guys can do is go build something and execute on the things that you've learned. There's nothing that I appreciate more and it's more fulfilling than to see your guys' comments of people that have said that the videos have helped them out or helped them progress to the next level of learning or executing on their project. I know I have a passion for learning and building things and I hope that these videos will allow you to go build your dreams and succeed. So God bless, go build something guys.